Today, I'm excited to walk you through a platform that is changing the game for businesses that are building AI agents. We're diving into Area, a powerful enterprise grade solution that lets you build, deploy, and manage AI agents with security, speed, and scalability. Whether you're running a business, part of a team, or just curious about AI, I'm gonna show you how simple it is to build inside of Area. I'm gonna go through step-by-step -step creating an agent, connecting it with your data, and then actually putting it to work. And if you're new here, my name is Elliot. I'm the founder of ManyFlow AI, which is my AI development company. And I'm also here on YouTube teaching you guys how to get started with AI and in the description down below is going to be a link to my free AI school community where I have a bunch of resources from my previous videos and a great place to connect with other entrepreneurs, other AI developers. So I definitely recommend you guys checking that out. And with all that being said, let's just dive into this video. So I have just opened up area, it's completely free to use and I'll have the link in the description down below as well. And so we can already see that this is pretty organized. We have all of our tabs to the left, everything that we need to do here. We have some tabs up here as well. We have catalog, gateway settings and support. We're primarily gonna be working with studio and we can start with the first tab over here, which is the insights. This is just a great way to keep track of your agents, your workflows, how they're operating, make sure everything's running smoothly. We can see the top providers. I've only tested this a few times, so I have only open AI over here. We can see the budget, cost analysis, things like that. Really, a really neat way to keep everything organized and tracked. Then here we have our projects. This is what we're gonna be primarily working with, but I'm gonna get more into that when we're actually building out our agent. Below that we have evaluations. This is kind of more of an insights, but for a specific project or agent, we can actually customize how it's being tracked. So for example, we go here, we can select the project we wanna track, and then also select the agent itself. We can select the data set, the, the type, the evaluation model. Again, this is very enterprise based, so it's really neat that they have all of these little intricate features. Uh, makes it really powerful for people deploying this at scale. Here we have the models, which is basically just all the models available. When you click on it, you can actually add it, and then you add your API key. It tells you the cost that it's gonna be per API call. So a bunch of models that are accessible here. Uh, I'm just sticking with OpenAI just to keep it simple. And then we here have our prompts. Again, this is where we can save our prompts, and you can reuse them. You could use community prompts. And then down here we have the MCP servers. This is a way to connect the tools to our agents. So you can see a lot of familiar faces here, Airtable, Lassian, GitHub, Google Workspace. In this video, I'm using Slack. So we can actually scroll up here and go to connected. And this is when I, con I connected my own Slack tool. Click on it. You can see I configured it that way. So now my agent, when I select Slack, will have it available to all of the Slack endpoints. Makes it super powerful as well. Go ahead and close that. And then below here we have tools. This is similar, but we can actually build your own tool if you want. You can see here, load memory, store memory. Uh, again, a bunch of options here as well, but they don't work exactly like MCP, but again, another really powerful feature to add to your agents. Here we have user prompts, and then we can see, we can see some pre-built prompts here. Agriculture, sustainability report, cross-sell opportunity identifier, a bunch of default prompts that we can use here as well. And then scrolling down to knowledge, we have data sources, so if you're just getting started and you're kind of new to AI, you'll see that you don't really understand, you know, AWS, S3, Apple Cloud Kit. So again, I do want to iterate, this is more enterprise-based, but, but can definitely be used for less enterprise use cases as well. And then here we have memories. We can go ahead and have a custom memory over here, add it. We're not going to be covering this in this video, but you can add memory to your, to your agents as well. So I'm going to go to my testing project. We're going to start building our agent out. I'm going to go to testing. Well, what you would do is add a new agent over here. And it'll, it'll configure your input and an output with an AI model. I already did this, but this is exactly the screen that you're going to get. So I'm just going to go back. I'm going to go to PDF invoice. That is the one I had just configured. It looks very similar to a lot of these no-code, low-code tools and platforms that you've probably used in the past. But I'm going to go ahead and break it down, of course. And for my use case, I'm going to be taking an invoice, actually feeding that to AI, and then having a human in the loop approve or deny. And that's going to send me the Slack message saying, hey, someone has approved this invoice or someone has denied this invoice and then give me some information on that invoice. So it's going to be a, a pretty neat use case. So after the input, we have a summarized agent. So what I would do is actually go to AI models here. I would just drag in this AI model and then I just connected it to my input. So I'm gonna delete that. So here I have my summarized agent. I'm gonna click on it. We can see I'm using GPT 4.1. Here's my prompt, it's very simple. You are an expert summarizer. Your task is to analyze given data, create a clear and thorough summary of the data presented, which is going to be that, that invoice. Here we have tools. I don't have anything connected for this one, but for these two agents below here, I do have, I do have tools configured. There's also a guardrails feature right here. If I click on it, you can create a new guardrail. This is really just to ensure AI safety. So if I go, for example, responsible AI, it'll say like detect certain words or phrases in user input and model responses, detects harmful user generated and AI generated context. So this is really just for safety, but we're not gonna be covering that in this video. Let's go back, let's confirm that. 
Next here is a approval request. We're gonna to go to flow control and you wanna drag and drop the human approval node right here. Now on this, we would select approvers. So I would go here, select my name right there. And then you can see, we can add the message. The message I have is new invoice, please verify request. And then the result is the summarize agent. So when I actually have the human in the loop part of the flow come up, it's going to say, it's going to give me the output of the summarize agent. And then here I'm just describing the approval route, a Slack message will be sent. And honestly, it's going to be the same thing for the, the described denial route as well. And then what I have on here is also enable email notifications. I'm just gonna go ahead and save that. And then now here we have two branches. We have approved and denied. So if I click on approve, it's gonna to go to this agent. If it goes denied, it goes to this agent. Pretty straightforward. And if I go here, approved agent, we have another prompt. I'm still using GPT-4.1. Send Elliot Girardi a Slack DM notifying him a new invoice has been approved. Include the invoice number, company name, and total only. And then for my deny, it's gonna be the same thing as well, but it's just telling me that it's actually been denied. And now if you go to one of these agents, we go to tools, we can see I do have a tool added. You can actually see I have tools one here, and that is my Slack MCP. So again, it has access to all of my endpoints for, for Slack. And then denied has the exact same thing. I added MCP here as well. And then at the bottom, we have our output that is just going to be the output of these nodes. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this into I do have I do have something here, but we're gonna go ahead and just test this right here. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna upload a fake invoice that I've created. I'm gonna go here. I have it right here, random invoice. I'm gonna click open. So obviously I'm gonna upload it. And I'm gonna say something like new invoice, you know, send to Elliot or something. And then from there, it's going to cook up the first summarize agent. And then it's gonna go directly into the approval request. And as you can see here, we can do, we can check it or we can deny it. And if I open my email, actually, you can see I just got an email here for an approval request. If I click on that, I can actually click on the link that they sent me. And I can see here the invoice that's been summarized. And then I can click approve request over here if I want to. So let's do that. Go back to area. And now it's calling the tool. We can see all of this here, calling the tools. And then I just got a Slack message. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Slack. And right here, just got it. A new invoice has been approved. Invoice number 4492. Here was the company. And then here is the total. So this was just an example of one of the many things that we can build inside of Area. Definitely recommend you guys checking them out. It's going to be the first link in the description down below. It's completely free to use. And as you can imagine, you can get a lot more complex with these. And again, if security is a big thing for you or you're working for an enterprise or you're looking to sell enterprise grade solutions, well, definitely stick to this platform. They make it really easy to use and, and they're very serious about their security. So if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Definitely helps my channel grow and I will see you all in the next video.